Okay, this is quite interesting, well at least for me anyway. Um, I've received a private message saying why do you do what you do? And this has come at a time when I'm preparing for later on this month when I've got a presentation on the subject of transdeism and what it is about to people who are within the pagan movement which I'm actually rather jittery about to a certain degree because a lot of the things that I talk about here on YouTube are in fact uh, a reaction against some of the more sort of like literalistic interpretations um, and strongly held faith based, based positions of people who are actually within the pagan movement um, so this is where things are going to get difficult so what I thought I'd try and do is to use this video as a means of expressing basically what my thoughts were I've got some notes over here I'll just bring them over Okay, I mean, there's lots of things I've written down here, uh, but I'm just going to go into a, a few points. You know, I think it's actually important that there should be a, a different classification of occult experimentation and investigation. So, so the emphasis is on seeking occult experiences and not trying to explain them. Why is that? Because humans, you know, humans want to feel that they are in position, in a position of knowledge or in the position of the truth. And as a result of that, we'll end up choosing irrational perspectives because they want to speed up their development of knowledge on a particular subject. So common sense explanations end up becoming the norm and what people present over the internet. I mean, if, if you have the experiences I've said before, frequently, okay, of seeing a ghost does that mean to say that ghosts actually exist? No, it means you've had a certain experience. But a common sense interpretation would be that yes, ghosts exist. Yes, there's life after death. Yes, you have total proof that there is life after death. When in fact, proof itself is merely a stage in an academic discourse, and it's not necessarily hard and fast. So, changing the dynamic away from the development of new religious perspectives onto the point of view of trying to study what it is that causes the phenomena and what it is that brings about the phenomena uh, or seems to uh, is much more important and attempting to do this from a scientific mindset rather than necessarily a natural science driven mindset is what is really important actually I haven't written that down I think I'll do that <laughs> once I finish this video thank you for helping me okay uh, and then, of course, you've got to think about the words associated with transdeism. I mean, transcendentalism deals with everything that comes out of religion. Like, okay, prayer, meditation, ritual, celebration, worship, tarot cards, charms, rune stones, uh, visualization, and all the rest of that, including spiritualistic practices. But words associated with deism are slightly different. And so trying to put transcendentalism and deism together is where things can be an intellectual hurdle for some people. Words associated with deism include free thought, reason and rationality, doubt, questioning, being non-dogmatic, non-religious and non-superstitious. Whereas, of course, within traditional transcendentalist schools of thought, the temptation is to move towards superstitious thinking, um, the causation... Um, sorry, correlation causation logical fallacy comes into play rather a lot as I'm sure you, you're aware and the temptation is to move towards the generation of a dogma or the acceptance of a particular dogma or doctrine and often to move away from freedom of thought so essentially the emphasis with transcendental deism is to keep all of the deistic attributes okay, but apply them to the generation of the experiences within transcendentalism now, what is the actual function of transdeism? And so basically what I'm doing now is I'm going through some of the things that I'm going to be discussing in the talk so that you, you, know, you get an idea as to where I'm coming from and I can practice. Okay, primary function is to create a rational and practical defense of the magic of tradition. 
um, but it is rational and practical, and that's essentially the main emphasis. And magical tradition refers to psi-type phenomena. Obviously, Alistair Crowley came up with the definition of magic being the art and science of causing change to occur in conformity with the will, which has been adopted by the New Age world, the occult world, and the pagan world to refer to uh, anything which is done with religion and with ritualistic practices. Whereas that was not what Alistair Crowley was saying, because he, he came. He, there was two separate types of magic he was talking about. One of which was life, just life, okay, doing normal physical things. That's why he provided an example of creating chloride of gold in a um, chemical laboratory, as well as the exercise of um, writing a book and publishing it. Okay, these are physical world things. They require um, no meditations, no mantras, they require just being able to be really good at doing normal stuff, okay, and applying scientific thought and artistic creativity to those things. But he also mentioned this magic of tradition. All right? Now it's rather strange, of course, that he spends most of his time writing about the magic of tradition, but he's left this definition in the earlier parts of his writings of magic being the art and science of causing change to occur in conformity with the will. Uh, so there's a strange duality with the way in which he's, he's obviously writing there, which has caused a lot of confusion amongst people within the occult world. So Crowley's understanding of the magical tradition was that it was unempirical, namely not measurable by regular scientific means. Okay, it is therefore a creative exercise or a religious exercise. So, transdeism is to create a rational and practical defense of the magic of tradition. Okay, being of course psi or psychic type phenomena. Is it defending it in terms of saying, turning around and saying it works? No, because it's got to be practical and rational. And as I've mentioned before, you can't use the phrase it works when applied to the unempirical magic of tradition. It, it can't be done if you're going to actually be honest in any way at all, be it intellectually or whatever, okay? Because if I was to say to you, okay, you say it works, you're therefore implying, okay, through the epistemology and ontology, namely the use of, uh, basically the use of language that you've got, your classifications of what knowledge is and what things are. You're, what you're saying is that the result is reliable to the letter. So if I gave you an individual who was a cancer patient and was going to die in five days' time, and I says, I want you to do your magic, that works, to cure this individual, and I don't mean heal, I mean cure this individual, before 9 a.m. tomorrow, and for them not to have another form of health relapse, even in the slightest, over the next 40 years. The question is, would your magic that works do it? To which, of course, the answer would probably be no. Okay, so we can't actually use that particular definition whatsoever. Uh, so it's I'm not talking about defending people's beliefs or superstitions uh, about what magic can do. What I am doing is trying to defend the actions and what the actions can create, which is, in accordance with my own personal experiences, certain varieties of strange experiences. And essentially, that is essentially all. Yes, um, I'm perfectly happy for anyone to have any religion that they see fit, but uh, because I am a deist or a deist, I would say that I believe in the de defense of reason and the separation of religious belief with something which is scientific and artistic, or indeed something which is of a factual nature. Uh, obviously one of the disagreements I have with young earth creationism is that it is sold as being natural science fact, when the fact of the matter is, it is not natural science fact, okay, and it therefore goes contrary to the way I understand it, deistic thinking, uh, and also practicality and rationality, okay. And the same goes with certain forms of superstitions associated with aspects of the Wiccan movements, aspects of the Christian movement, Jewish movements, all the rest of them. Okay? And trying to get that um, distinction right can be quite hard for a lot of people. Now, is there another reason for transdeism? And I would say yes. It is, in fact, the... Um, 
the superstitious, dogmatic, or religious attitudes, and also the absence of freedom of thought, which is present in a lot of New Age thinking, and occult thinking, pagan thinking, and Wiccan thinking, which essentially stops the subject of apparently supernatural phenomena, or indeed the strange experiences themselves, from being taken seriously by the natural science community. Although in the modern era we have people like Dean Radin, whose wonderful meter analysis has suggested that something has happened, this is more or less as far as research has gone into things such as, you know, remote viewing, telepathy, precognition, psychic phenomena, self-healing, and all the rest of that. And a much more logical, rational, and down-to-earth body of knowledge and paradigm has to be created to assist allegedly or apparently occult type phenomena to become accepted more in the mainstream and in the mainstream of scientific inquiry with the passage of time. This cannot happen if people spend all of their time just discussing and arguing over forms of literalist religious balderdash. Um, it's not quite good enough. What is the point of connecting this with deism? Well, deism actually encourages a lot of thought processes and attitudes which are useful. Yes, there are deists who have come to some false conclusions uh, by my standards as a result of their study of, of nature um, because, you know, there, there is a bit of an overlap with some forms of creationism within some forms of deism and I think that does muddy the well but essentially the idea of doubting, questioning uh, and trying to be sufficiently free thinking to be able to say I disagree um, would actually make more sense so that's just a basic overview let's hope I can actually say this stuff when I'm in the company of people who are um, of a religious bent Thank you very much for listening.